Hi there, and welcome to episode 3 of my tutorial series for Going Medieval. I'm Icon, and in this episode, we're going to dive deeper into the construction system of a game. And I'm also going to spend my first few thoughts into the topic of defenses. Because just like the game tells us here, we are odd to build ourselves some defenses. Because we're going to be attacked rather sooner than later and as you can see here there's literally no way of no, no means of fortification here anywhere so that's something we got to work on but things we got to work on as well are of technological nature because right now we might be able to plant our food and cook it on a on a campfire but by no means we want to end here so what can we produce early on? Basically nothing, as you can see here. Production means are totally non-present. So the other thing that I like to do here is to give my folks at least some means of accommodation. Because, you know, it's a lot nicer if we have at least some place to sit at and to eat at. All these little things provide mood bonuses to your people and are not to be thought uh, too small about. So, another thing we're going to need later in the winter are clay braziers, but or, you know, I'll spill them out of stone as soon as you have the technology, but we're not there yet. So, our little community here now is working out quite decently. We planned our own food. We produce our own tech, and we're also going to create some furniture now. So, I can't really do much in terms of new buildings before we can create new, before we have invented new technologies. So, things that are really useful to, in, to invent early on, in my opinion, tailoring is really useful because you can create your own clothing. And clothing is very, very, very important. You're starting out with winter clothing of bad quality. But nothing beats food preservation and brewing technology. I'll rush towards brewing next because, as you might remember from the last episode, alcohol is a basic need of your folks and our alcohol reserves are dwindling. So we got some ale. We started out with some to make it uh, less difficult to last through these times. We had a little bit of a prayer there. But uh, in the long run, we will need a, a production of those. That's what we're going to provide. So let's put up some torches in there, mainly for decorational reasons. And I want to build today a two-story building so my idea was to build a science, uh, something like a library, I like to call that. So first off, we're going to unblock all those clay piles because I don't want to build out of wood this time. Or one, because I like the, uh, the Ryans optically. And for another, we, we should build with the Ryans from time to time, but let's wait until our folks are done with these things. Line it in the meantime is uh, beautying up the, the houses. There we go. The only thing missing so far is the flooring, but I don't want to... I don't want to keep lining it away from his uh, other jobs too long. It's my researcher, wasn't it? Yeah. So we get a opportunity for a new for a new settler. So um, if we accept this person, we're going to annoy people here. We're going to be attacked by one archer and two marauders as a response to that. We don't know much about the person here. You hover over that exclamation mark. We can only see a couple of things about Harabreed Notley, but we're definitely going to pick that person up. New people are hard to come by and are 
really valuable and the the first person that comes by your place should always be picked up but we have to fight for that so we're going to do so so we're going to we're going to say hi to Herobreed. He's going to come over to our place. He's wounded because he fled from his old place. So we're going to say copy. Uh, yeah. We're going to put a bed now into this room. So he has some spot to lay down. We have to treat him because we need his support in the upcoming battle. So. Let's do something a little, a little nifty. This will only work if our enemy comes from this direction, but I'll try it nevertheless. So, in this game, standing on a higher ground provides your archers a damage bonus. So, what we're going to do is a very, very simple contraption. So, I'm going to build a little 3-on-3 three -three knob uh, thing here. And we're going to put a staircase in front of that. Nothing more. And on top of these goes wooden floor, mainly for the optics. So we're going to use this platform later for combat issues. The trick is quite easy. You put a melee person on, down here and your archers can fire from up above and have increased damage for, uh, from their arrows. Particularly good when you are just uh, early on like I am here without any real fortifications and far far away from the capabilities of building one. Whoops, so you see sometimes, sometimes these things happen. You will get a feeling for or when you build on top of another wall from time to time. The building system in this game is really fun once you grew, grow used to it. But I gotta admit I had my problems early on, so don't be too surprised if you do so as well. So I got one thing uh, not right, tending. Let's see, yeah, medicine is on Mehendilda's uh, highest thing. So we need somebody to tend Herobreed and Convalescence should now be on highest priority. I hope that Herobreed will be will be capable of fighting for us. So let's check out the well marksmanship ain't that horrible. So let's look into our storage. Sadly we only got another spear, so well. There's two options we could take now. We could strip away that bow from Baldwin. I think that's what we're going to do. So here's the deal. We're going to drop that short bow by clicking there. And Baldwin is going to receive that wooden spear. Because Baldwin is a is capable of fighting with uh, melee weapons and with ranged weapons. Whereas Herobreed, well this way everybody has a weapon He's, uh, he or she is capable of wielding, which is in my opinion very important right now. So we got one defense platform north of, north of us and one west of us, uh, south of us. I, I probably should put one east of us as well, but I don't know. I really want to do that. Plan raping mishandled. Does this feel? Does this sound uh, like violence to me? <laughs> right. Just randomly harvesting things that are useful in my base's vicinity. I'm not going too far away for mushrooms or stuff like that. But if they are growing basically next door to you, it would be a shame not to pick them up. Here's another deal. We have here a wonderful little place for red currant shrubs, but there's no staircase. So in situations like these, I I love to go just there and and help out nature a bit. But keep in mind that all these uh, squares where this uh, where there's this pair of feet should be accessible, or at least two of them. So let's put down the staircase there. So this way we can harvest those uh, red currant shrubs during the during the good times. 
All right. So sadly, research wise, we're not making the huge progress because, you know, we're being we're, we're under attack. Well, there I wanted to do something about construction of buildings and then I end up defending myself. So Herobreed is almost recovered. So with wounds, it, it works like that. The HP of a person can grow to their maximum amount way before the actual wound is, is gone. So here we have that mild concussion and it will, well, just end when the enemy is attacking as far as I can see. But you see, Airbreed's HP are already completely, uh, completely full. And while people are walking, the recovery slows down. You might have noticed that the uh, time was a lot lower back there. I thought I ordered you to, to convalesce, dude. Wait, why are you constructing? It doesn't make any sense, but I don't mind too much. You can, of course, micromanage these things, and it is uh, it is better to do so, of course. But I I don't have it in me right now. Let him run free with his concussion if he wants to. <clears throat> I'm fine with that. So here, Baldwin is now sitting at his table, and he's unhappy because he's eating raw food. But... Well, he ate at a table, just making people also happy. So you see, the investment of resources is definitely worth the effort. So right now we're uh, accumulating the books. I got no clue why Mahanilda is doing the intellectual work. In situations like these, you can also right-click and unassign people. If you really don't want them to do something, for example, Harabreed, I could also just... Uh, this this ad deactivate the uh, the work he's doing right now until there's only convalescence left. But I don't know if that dude wants to work, let him work. I'd say. So we're we're allocating the books. Of course, it was more effective when Mahinilda did that. She she was working faster due to a higher research skill. Where is it? Intellectual 15 it is on her. Whereas line it is uh, pretty low, but he'll be getting there. I'll rather have researchers like him learning that. Because it's the bonus is massive, like 2.5 times means that there's no chance that somebody without a passion can ever keep up with a passionate person, even if it's only one star. That's why I'm emphasizing this so much. Right, a search party arrives. I know. I know. Wounds need tending. Yeah, well. Who decided to run around the whole day? It wasn't me. So, furniture, of course, is also a very, very appealing technology due to the fact that you get better beds, chairs, bookshelves and racks these are pretty cool but for now we're going to select brewing there we go so we are going to be attacked in a couple of hours but well do i care about that yes i do we're going to uh we're going to go for the combat first and then we're going to construct the brewery i will construct the brewery by the way out of clay because clay right now is very available for me and we're going to have a little bit of a material diversity here so here i'm pretty uh, close to the corner of the map down here i do plan to build some fortifications later so actually i want to expand the the, the actual base here into that direction but I don't want to build anything on top of this gray stuff. Also, uh, the 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 this, this, uh, black stuff here is coal. 
these are mineral deposits, which are really valuable. I didn't really talk about them much yet, but here's salt, for example. So, I'd say brewery living over here sounds like a good idea. Or, no, we're going to build the library, and this is going to be my new brewery. That's what we're going to do. Wonderful. So, I'm using this space here, because we're going to wall off this area later here. You know, it's going to be a very easy area to, to seal myself off. So, yeah. But first, let's just let them produce some research and wait for the attack. I'm going to fast forward that. Now, it's only one and a half hours left to the attack. And here's one thing that I can't recommend enough. Just save your game, you know? In this game, if you're not uh, playing under some uh, Iron Man conduct, just do yourself the favor and, and save the game when the when the attack is uh, imminent or just save the game a couple of hours before so you can upgrade your defenses or something like that they are different ideas so give Herobreed over well no, we're, we're not going to do so so we're going to be attacked and we're going to get a mood bonus so here we go we're we're now under attack so let's slow down the game and here I'm holding down shift to select multiple people while clicking them with the left mouse button. Now I'm pressing T, because you know, where are the enemies? So you, you have to look at the borders to know where the attack is coming from. No. So let's uh, let's get on, up on on one of those uh, defense posts that I've built. And let's wait. So usually that's not uh, not that anticlimactic. Overlook something. Are we suffering from an early access bug? Because yeah. right now, I don't see any enemies. I'm confused now, guys. I'm sorry. Usually, the this has never happened to me. Usually, my my enemies are are attacking. So. And coming from one of those borders, I think you even get a readout about what direction they would be coming from. So, unless it's uh, un utterly delayed now, I think we got bugged, my friends. So, well, the next opportunity for a fight will come for sure. So, wow, that was unexpected. <laughs> Yeah, but like I said in episode one, these things were ought to happen. I'd be not too surprised if we will get attacked a little bit later too. So, but, you know, we were just that battle ready a moment ago. Let's, let's take down a wolf. With wolves, it's a little bit different than with a deer. Um... You would want to let your uh, archers have the initiative on the wolf instead of your instead of your melee people unless the wolf runs away 3000 miles from you okay hunting in this game is really a pain at this point i'm i'm not too happy about it so here this deer is looking good because we we are running low on food you know so here we go sending my melee people in and definitely doing that before my archers do go for a single shot. Now, let's send the archers. And that's beautiful. Just like I want it to be. Alright, this is going to uh, get us some food here. And yeah, I'm very sorry about the, the lazy 
combat moral of our enemies here. I'm, I'm sorry. I did expect more from the from the extortionists. Maybe I misread that uh, combat uh, thingy there, but I'm pretty sure that the readout said that I'm going to be attacked by three people. Whatever. Let's not ponder about that. Let's start building. We got enough time left to build ourselves a neat little library. So we're going to go over here and I'll build this just like that. Bit of a larger uh, structure here because later down the road we will get access to what's it called again? Uh, different work tables. So to put a door in. So, long story short, we were going to have more than just the research tables, and therefore I want a little bit of an extra room here for those. And also, we're going to build up the brewing station inside the inside that hut here. And as you see, we also need more. We need more wood. You always need more wood, I say so. So that's gonna be cancelled. I selected bad trees. So now that we are also capable of planting plants, you're also capable of planting trees. I didn't mention that in the last episode, but birch trees, they don't require any uh, botany skill. They, they take really a long time until they grow and are ready for harvest, but it is pretty much worth it. You, you, get, a, you get a free growing re, uh, source of wood, and I'm going to put up a little bit of a grove here. Now, obviously we are running out of clay quite quickly. So here we're also going to start mining for the first time. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit hard to see right now, but you remember there's clay. You can also see right above the construction queue, there's a readout of what's on, under your cursor here, clay. So we're now going to use the mining tool and we're going to chop out some clay. You see, when you hover with the mining tool over these blocks is there's the amount of hp and the amount of provided material so even a, a mound of dirt yields a little bit of clay but really not too much over here we got coal with a lot more hp than the other stuff limestone deposit we're going to need that later and so on and so forth there's plenty of resources we're going to need and that's why we're checking out for somebody with a decent mining skill. Mining, by the way, is also something which is very much worth to have a specialist on. Well, I didn't mention it in, in the first place when I was rolling out my, my starter characters because I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of promoting over optimization of your starts. It's for me very important to have strengths and weaknesses because you can basically, of course, prepare the ideal party. If that's your kind of thing, just do so. I'm not that. I'm not that much a big fan. So we're finishing this thing here. Now, like I said, I want a second story. To do so, we're first going to put up a wooden staircase here, and if we would put it like that, people couldn't ascend to the next uh, sta uh, story because the, the staircase would end right in front of the wall. Y your people don't like that. You can go for a staircase like that, for example. This is, this is better. So now the uh, floor tiles will be going from that direction. And we're also going to need a couple of wooden beams because otherwise our flooring would not be would not work. So roughly said the easiest way to explain that. So when we put down wooden floor, one piece of wall, uh, here's a good point, one piece of wall will support in roughly four, four tiles adjacency to it. 
then it loses stability. Everything in the game has a base stability of four points, which means one piece of wall can support roughly... This is a simplification. Every piece of wall can support four units of building around it, and then people uh, stuff will break down. So what I'm trying to say here is you should roughly place down a wooden beam every three or four um, grids here. I mean, you can also, if you want to have exact numbers on that, check out the almanac and search for construction. And I think it was in the miscellaneous tab now. Well, here in the index area of construction. Um, I'm always searching for that, but there's also a, a readout. Ah, here, stability. I knew that was a, a search bar. Your stability. Read that if you want to more want to know more details. We're also going to work with that later. But here you see pretty beautifully what I tried to explain to go. So I'm doing this here for the sake of the wooden floors, but we're not going to need the floors, of course, on top of the walls. We're going to need the floors in the interior of the room. So here's a bit of a a, a pain to place them, as you see. The cursor keeps wobbling up and down and back and forth, and this is a little bit, uh, a little bit annoying to go for. So, my personal approach is usually, I'll wait until the uh, beams are done, or you're building your second set of walls on top of that. There are a couple of little tricks that help you out here. So now we're going to place the second set of walls right on top of that. And if I remember correctly, then it gets a lot easier to select that. Now with the beams present, yeah. With the beams present, you notice that the cursor immediately hops uh, the the floor tile on top of the beam. I don't know if it's uh, well discernible. Without the beams, you, you don't have anything to put the floor upon, which is quite bad. All right, now we can set up floors. And I'm, I'm leaving out the staircase, of course, because, you know, it doesn't need to be floored, something like that. And now you can just drag and drop it all, all over the rest of the building. There we go. And last but not least, we're also going to need a roof. In this uh, scenario, we're, we're going to take a wooden roof. And yeah, this is we don't need any beams for the support or such. And voila. Somewhere later down the road, once we've got the necessary resources, this will be a completed building. And this is how you how you build a, a simple two-story house. Of course, you can do a lot more with the uh, mechanics that I have uh, introduced here. But for starters, I think this is, this is just nice. And as you know, might notice here, we're, we're starting to run low on wood. Here's one thing that I like to promote. At the beginning, I I cut down all the trees just like I, just like I ran across them, but when you are not that needy anymore, when you click those bad boys, check out to only chop mature trees. They yield the most wood. The growing trees, they're, uh, you can also notice that they are pretty, uh, pretty bit smaller. They won't give you the entire amount of, of wood. And also, if you don't harvest a mature tree for too long, I think that's when they turn dead. Sometimes there are dead trees. Just take them. All right. So we got that down. The brewery is also done. Research points aren't produced yet. So brewery, you, you might have already guessed, it is just as easy as all the other things were. So rough wine is created out of red currant. Ale is created out of barley. Beer is created out of herbs. So brewing, brewing station needs, I can't remember anymore. It also needs a a fuel. I'm not sure if we're going to need wood for that. You see here, barley needs fuel, but red, rough wine doesn't need. So I'm not sure if these needed coal or not. 
So we have lots of red current lying around here, and stuff doesn't uh, seem to be hauled in time. So we're going to assign Baldwin now to the hauling duty. Because, you know, that's also pretty important. Also, stewardship. Taking care of basic tasks, like locking doors and, and such things. I like to put that on a top-notch priority for everybody. So, if you want to do so, just click the top line. And then you can put it up for everybody. Because I don't like it when, when basic things like these get delayed for whatever reason. Alright. So, we're pretty much at the end of today's episode. Now, we're going to produce rough wine now. And I'll only produce this until I have like 10 units or so. I'll, I'll, I'll weigh that down. Well, let's say 20. So, you should not overproduce that because red currant is a nice backup food for your people when you're when you're out of everything basically but on the other hand it's the simplest way of getting your people alcohol and well since alcohol is a basic need i really like to promote it that way so now we're also waiting for people to get botany higher and look at baldwin botany 11 manilda botany 13 so you remember when in the last episode when we weren't capable of planting these things, we're now capable of planting out carrots. So, of course, there is a, a method to be, uh, to be aware of. These plants, they all have different grow times and different behaviors. But I gotta admit, right now, at this point of the game, I, I was uh, pretty well off by just uh, blatantly ignoring these things. Just providing enough food for everybody by overproducing. So I'm also going to put, put up the first flax field. Because we want to produce clothing at some point. So let's put up two of them as well. Okay, so let's end this episode here. We're at a good spot. Next episode, we're going to set up that library for real. So that means we're going to put up uh, storage areas and configure that accordingly. And also, I want to set up workshops and such in the next episode. And the infamous cellar digging, which is also going to be a topic for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Drop your comments down below. I'd be delighted to hear from you. I'll leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed to make the video more visible and of course subscribe and turn on those notifications to not miss anything in the future see you guys next time bye bye